Okay, let's go scan some stuff. Not with the peeper! Hey guys, Sport to Death, and welcome to my Beginner's Guide to Subnautica. Um, I wanted to make a Beginner's Guide because, uh, like most survival games, uh, they're a little hard in the beginning until you're familiar with everything, so what this guide is going to do is going to help you get your feet wet. Yeah, I, I went there. Alright, so, uh, the first thing you're going to notice after you put the fire out, and I skipped that part because it's a little chaotic and it's a little hard to record, is you've got this fire extinguisher. And, like, you're stuck with it in your hand and you have nothing else in your PDA, so you can't assign anything to a quick slot. And if you don't feel like walking around with the fire extinguisher, what you can do is actually hit the circle button. And then I will put it away. And that's actually something I didn't find out until much later, so I was swimming around with a fire extinguisher for a long time. Alright, so, uh, another hit. Uh, you can hit X or L2 uh, anytime you want to interact with something. I recommend getting to the habit of hitting L2, uh, because when you go out and you're swimming, it's going to be a lot easier to remember to hit L2 than to hit X, especially because your right uh, thumb is going to be on the right joystick. So uh, having it in your uh, having your left uh, index finger hitting the button to, to actually interact with stuff is a good uh, rule of thumb. So even though it says X, use L2. Alright, so, uh, another tip a lot of people don't even notice is there's a stor uh, storage container right here, which contains uh, flares, water, and nutrient blocks. Uh, I recommend hanging on to the nutrient blocks because the nutrient blocks actually don't degrade with time, and a lot of the food that you pick up will degrade with time. Uh, but do take the water, because the first thing you're going to do is get thirsty. Uh, your thirst ha has a tendency to go down twice as fast as your hunger in the beginning of the game, so if you want, you just go ahead and just drink some of that water right now. There we go. Oh, and I hit the wrong thing. Okay. Okay, so let's get out of the craft. There we go. And you're gonna see the aurora, and, um, recommendation, don't go near it. It's going to explode at some point. The Aurora suffered orbital power failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. Okay, so you're going to need food and water to survive. So the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out how to catch stuff. Um, one of the things I'm going to recommend is instead of just running around and trying to grab stuff real quick, uh, there are these creep vines over here. Uh, when you're at the creep vines, you're going to look for this glowing sack. Oh, hang on, running out of air. There's another thing you're going to have to get used to. Alright, there it is. It's this little uh, sack of creep vine eggs. Uh, watch out for that thing that seems to be hovering around them, because it will attack you. Let's see if I can find one that's not being guarded by a vicious predator. Alright. Okay. So collect two of these seeds. Now you can take more than two if you want, but you need at least two. Okay. Now that you've got two, you're going to notice that you're swimming kind of slow. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to craft some swim fins so you can actually swim better. So, let's get back to the pod. Okay, so once you get back to the pod, go over here and use the fabricator. It's going to show up on your resources, and you're going to take that, um, the seeds and turn them into silicon rubber. There we go. I'm just going to make two. I think you only need one in order to make the fins, but, you know, if you look down at your feet, they're, they're bare and naked, and they're not going to help you swim, so if you put the fins on, you're actually going to be fast enough that it'll help you catch the fish. The fabricator draws from available there we go. To provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your okay. safety, this setting cannot be overridden. Okay, another thing that you can do is that uh, if you find yourself getting hurt, uh, and you do wind up hurt in the very beginning of the game, you can use the med kits. Every, like, 60 to 90 seconds, this thing will actually make another med kit for you. So you basically get free med kits. So if you wind up getting hurt during the course of the game, come back here, chill out for a while, pick up a med kit, and then you've got free health. Okay, so obviously we're getting hungry. So we're going to have to go out and catch some fish. There's a couple of different types of fish, uh, and each one of them is good for uh, different things. This one is a peeper, and it looks like a giant eye. Uh, the reason I got the swim fins is they are pretty agile, so you're going to want to be able to keep up with them and then grab them. All you have to do is get close to it and hit the L2 button, 
and you get the peeper. But we need another type of fish on top of the peeper. Uh, that's also very important. And this one over here is a bladder fish. The bladder fish is what's going to give you water, and you're going to need a lot more bladder fish than you are peepers. They're also... Get over here! Okay. Okay, so now we've got a peeper and we've got a bladder fish. We're going to want to go back to the escape pod because you're not going to want to eat them raw. Um, you could, but it's not a good idea. Humans have evolved to, uh, to cook their food. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a cooked peeper. Okay. While disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids, and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is take this bladderfish and make it into water. I don't know where the plastic jug comes from, let's just not ask that question. Alright, so now you've got your basic food and water. So you can also eat the bladderfish and you can also take other types of fish and cook them, but they're the most abundant ones, so that's usually a good way to start, is to get the bladderfish for your water and to get the peepers for your food. There is another way to get water, but it's a little bit more involved, and I'll go into that in a minute. Okay, another useful tip is that L1 and R1 will actually control your height. So if you want to stay in the same spot and go up and down, R1 will sink you, and L1 will make you go up. Uh, this is really useful, too, if you're uh, a little bit disoriented and you're trying to get to the surface before you run out of air. And speaking of air, the next thing we're going to do is actually try and make a new oxygen tank, because you only have about 40 seconds of air when you start out. Uh, in order to fix that, you're going to need to uh, get some titanium, and you can get titanium from little pieces of scrap. Another useful tip is that when it actually gets dark out, uh, it's actually easier to see underwater a little bit because some of the plants are bioluminescent. Uh, however, you're going to miss a lot of stuff like the limestone and the actual thing that we're looking for, the titanium, uh, which you can also get from... Uh... Oh, there we go, I got some titanium. But you can also get it from pieces of ship wreckage. So let me see if I can find one. Okay, so not every piece of wreckage can be picked up, but when you do find one, you get it close to it, It'll tell you you can pick up the metal salvage if you hit the X button or the L2 button, like I said before. Uh, this one, obviously, is just a little bit too big, so you can't take it, but if you kind of hunt around, maybe you'll find another piece like that one. And, oop, one more right here. And that should be enough to get started. Okay, so now that we've got enough titanium and pieces that can be turned into titanium, you just want to go back in here and change the metal salvage into titanium, and you should get four pieces of titanium for each piece of metal salvage that you picked up, which is pretty good. You'll also notice that as I'm actually using the fabricator, the power indicator on the top is changing because it actually takes power to, uh, to run the fabricator. This will come back over time, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, so once you've got enough titanium, the first thing you want to do is go into the equipment setting and get a standard O2 tank. And this is going to increase your oxygen from 45 seconds to a lot better. Okay, 75 seconds. That's a lot more time that you can spend underwater. Alright, now that we've got enough titanium too, uh, you can make a couple of other things like a floating air pump and pipes, but don't worry about that yet. Next, you're going to want to go into the tools and craft a survival knife. So you need silicon rubber, which we got before, and some more titanium. And the knife is useful if you're breaking limestone opcrop. Okay, so the knife is really useful because you can use it to fend off enemies. And also, if you're trying to break limestone outcroppings and you have the knife in your hand, it takes one hit instead of three. So that's going to save you a lot of time when you're underwater. The other thing the knife is good for is it allows you to get water from another source. Um, you need two items in order to do this. You're going to need table coral. Uh, if you find the giant coral tubes here and you find these little outcroppings, if you hit it with the knife, you'll get a coral sample. All right? And you also need salt. Salt is something that you can find uh, just floating around on the ocean floor. Uh, it's a little crystal. You just have to pick it up. And I actually already found one, so I'm going to head back and show you how to make water the alternate way. Let's just get back to the escape pod. Won't even bother cutting here. 
And you can come in through the, the lower half of the escape pod, so that's kind of useful. It saves you a little bit of time. Uh, if you go in here, take the resources. Uh, down here, if you take salt and a coral tube sample and mix them together, you get bleach, which you can use to sanitize the natural water. Is an essential chemical used for cleaning rooms and purifying water. Thank you. Uh, I keep getting interrupted by the computer. Thanks, computer. Uh, but yes, you can then take the bleach, and then the bleach will actually make two bottles of water. And it's always good to keep water on your person, but it's not always good to keep food on your person because the food will actually... Stop talking, computer. The f food will actually rot if you cook it, so if you actually catch a fish and you intend to eat it, Keep it alive until you're actually ready to eat, and then just bring it back to the ship. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys getting the copper, and the other thing you want to grab is two of these acid mushrooms, and you'll use that to craft a battery. Also, I just found a creature egg. If you make a aquarium later on, uh, you can use that in order to, uh, to hold the, uh, the, the fish that you find. Okay, so now that we have two acid mushrooms and a copper ore, we can craft a battery. And you need the battery in order to create a scanner. Okay, so here's the scanner. You're going to need one piece of titanium and one battery. And once you get the scanner, you can start scanning the wreckage in order to find blueprints. The scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. I just said that, computer. But yes, once you get the scanner, what you're going to want to do is put it on the quick bar. So open up your menu, locate the scanner, and hit X. And it should replace something on the quick bar. There we go. My goal here is to get the peeper out of my quick bar at some point, uh, so you can just keep rotating items in and out until the peeper gets pushed off the side of the screen. It's not the most elegant way in order to manage your inventory, but that's what Subnautica does. Okay, let's go scan some stuff. Not with the peeper! Alright, so when you're looking for things to scan, look for the cargo containers that are actually open on one side, and it will always be this side. If they're closed off like this, there's nothing to scan. Okay, when you do actually find something that you want to scan, it will look like this. And just hold the button until it gets the scan. Now, that's not the thing we're looking for right now, but it doesn't hurt to have it. Okay, so the next thing we're really looking for is two pieces of the sea glide fragment. If you find them, scan them. Now, there's definitely more than two pieces that exist, and if you find more after that and scan them, they'll actually just give you leftover titanium. So, if you do find extra pieces after you've already got the blueprint for the Sea Glide, make sure you've got some room in your inventory, or you'll just waste the titanium. Okay, so in order to make the Sea Glide, you're going to need a battery, lubricant, and copper wire. We can actually already make the lubricant because we picked up extra uh, creep vines, or the creep vine seeds. Just scroll down here. I need to make some of the lubricant. Lubricant is essential in construction of vehicles and power plants. Okay, so this next part is going to be a little lit, uh, less straightforward. You're going to have to find at least three pieces of copper. In order to do that, you're just going to have to find little pieces of limestone and break them open. Hey, I found copper. All right, so now I only need two more. Uh, another useful thing is if you find these little orbs, they're gravitational trap fragments, you can scan those. If you get two of them, you should be able to craft a gravitational trap, and that will help you catch fish. I haven't tried it yet, but they're supposed to be pretty good. If you find these little quartz crystals, you should also pick them up. If you take two pieces of quartz, you can turn it into glass, and you'll need that for some of the more uh, intermediate recipes. sulfur deposits in the local cave systems. Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. Silver-based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. 
Okay, so silver and sulfur are both really important things, and I found them in this cave. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard to figure out where the caves are, so I'll show you guys where this is. Uh, if you come out here, and I'm just holding the L1 button so I go straight up and down, uh, your base is right over there. So you're about 60 meters from your base, and you're between the base and the aurora. So if you're about halfway between the two, and you go straight down, you should be able to see this cave right here. Now, if we're lucky, we can get sulfur. In order to do that, we have to go find these very, very dangerous creatures and chase them and have them explode in front of us. Uh, also, if you pull out a flare and use it, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, like dropping it because you can use the flares over and over again as long as you just put them back in your inventory. They will run out eventually, but you've got them for a while. Now I just have to find one of those creatures. And of course, it's not going to be in this cave. Thanks, Nautica! It does that sometimes. Ooh, he's candy. Okay, another spot for the cave is if you're slightly closer to the Aurora, and you go down here, and you're 150 meters away. It looks like there's a cave right down here. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to find the caves where the creatures actually spawn because the caves actually have to be of a certain depth. Otherwise, the creatures won't appear. I think, however... We're going to be okay in this one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so when you see that thing, you're going to have to run, because it is going to explode. There we go. Okay. Now we just go back and reach in here. And grab the sulfur. Another useful tip is if you see these giant creatures here, they're called reefbacks. Reefbacks often carry deposits of minerals on their back, and they might be minerals that you wouldn't normally be able to get in the safe shallows when you start the game. Uh, I have actually found silver and gold on the reefbacks way earlier than you're supposed to be able to get them. So always go check out the reefbacks. They should have little blue barnacles, and those are the things that you can break in order to get stuff. You can also scan them just to be kind of completionist like me. There we go. So that's a barnacle. It looks kind of blue. Break it and then just kind of look for whatever comes out like that. Now we got enough copper. Another great thing is the reefbacks tend to swim in schools, so if you don't get what you want from one, look around and see if there's another one in the area. You might be able to go back and get what you need. Oh, and yeah, it looks like there are things on the backs of the reefbacks that can hurt you, so just be careful what you touch. Ow. I think I'm going to get out of here. Okay, so now we have uh, most of what we need in order to make the sea glide, and I believe I also have enough for, to make the repair tool. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is go down here and actually craft the sea glide. We've got the battery, the lubricant, the copper wire, and the titanium. The copper wire, you're just going to need two pieces of copper, and that'll give you the copper wire. And the battery, again, is two acid mushrooms and one piece of copper. your effective exploration range. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to craft the repair tool. We still have silicon rubber that we got in the very beginning of the game. We got the cave sulfur from the exploding fish, and we have plenty of titanium. So we're just going to make that. And then you can take that repair tool, put it in your inventory, and actually repair the rest of the escape pod, because the escape pod is not doing too good. Okay, and it does have a power limit, but you can actually just go and make a battery and recharge it. So just hold the R2 button, and you'll repair whatever's around. Okay, you're definitely also going to want to uh, repair the radio in the corner here, because the radio is going to actually help you progress through the game. It gives you uh, clues and plot and stuff like that. We already have a message. Survivor, you have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. Be sure to vary your routine for uniform muscle development. Okay, so one last thing I'm going to show you guys before I call it a video is uh, you do have a storage container over here, and you do have a limited amount of inventory in your inventory. Um, so if you do wind up filling up your storage container and your inventory, one of the last things you can do is go over here and create a waterproof locker. And I'm just going to make one now, even though I don't need one. Okay, and then what the waterproof locker does is it actually can be deployed outside, and I know there are lockers that you can actually make that go inside structures, but that's going to be for a later video. Um, but yeah, you just come out here, find a nice spot, usually right below the escape pod, put it in your inventory, and then if you hit R2, you deploy the locker, and then you can just put items inside the locker. And you can pick the locker back up and move it later if you want to. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope these tips actually get you started in the game. Uh, I know it took me a couple of hours to get used to things, and when I started making this video, I actually got everything I did on my first day done in less than an hour. So, hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!